Right, thank you so much for your talk. Um, as a fellow Muslim, I just wanted to know, how do you reconcile internal contradicting rationalities in the Quran, possibly? Not only internal ration, like contradicting rationalities in the Quran, but also chronolo chronologically contradicting rationalities. So something that might have been rational, um, I, I don't know, 50 or 100 years ago, or even 10 years ago, could possibly not be rational. Can you give me now. an example? <laughs> mm. Um, I, I know this is cliche, but possibly the hijab, but, and I know that hijab is not necessarily, um, uh, there's contradiction over whether or not it is something that's in the Quran or not in the Quran, and the reason for wearing the hijab, there's a lot of contradictions on whether it is something that is rational or, or irrational. So, and this could have been something that was rational maybe 10 or 20 years ago, but could not, might not be rational now, or, or, and I'm not making any value judgments, I'm just saying. How do you deal so, with that? So it's quite interesting the way you, you put it at the beginning by saying it was maybe rational in the past and is less rational now. It's a, just a question. Uh, it's an example that you are taking. Uh, in fact, in the way, as a believer, I deal with the Quran, I think that uh, there is nothing in the Quran in itself that is irrational or less rational. I think that the problem is not in the Quran, is the problem is the, in the readers of the Quran that sometimes have uh, an understanding that uh, might be uh, sometimes very, very literalist and sometimes not taking into account the, 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 the context. Uh, my take on, on your uh, uh, example is I don't think it's uh, irrational now. I think that the hijab and the khimar, which is the right term in the, in the, in the Quran, is something if you come to Al Khimar in his, its meaning, in the, the verses, in the tradition, and in, so in the text itself, and then you add the reading of the scholars from the, just before the uh, colonization, because all the discussion about it might be not <coughs> an Islamic principle came in specific understanding under colonization and after. Just before this, you don't have this kind of discussion. And even in the text itself is the way we understand khimar and in this, the way we understand mo uh, modesty. I think that from where I understand the text, and I think 99.99999% of the scholars, is that it's an obligation. So it's not irrational. Now, what? You might disagree with this. No, and that's the thing. I didn't want it. I, didn't, I wasn't trying to So to talk about this, you might have to give me an example because the example that you took here, it might be problematic. I don't think any irrational dimension. Now, when it comes to verses that are perceived as conflicting or not uh, uh, rationally consistent, I think that this is where uh, it's quite important to, you know, you need to deal with the Quran not in the way you read it. It's important to understand to deal when it comes to the legal framework in, in the Quran, you deal with uh, at least three different levels. The first one is uh, the global message. The global message. How do you get this global message? You have to, 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 to go a step. Uh, 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 beneath, and, and this is where the chron chronology is important. And then from the chronology and the global message, you need to get the, the, the objectives and maqasid that you are trying to reach, that's what you have to achieve. So in a comprehensive approach, you have the chronology helping you to get the global message based on the the, the objective that you are trying to get. And then when you read the Quran, sometimes the verses out of the chronology or out of the global message, sometimes, for example, in the, uh, the global message and the objective. So, for example, in the light of this, I would say anyone today who is coming to me telling me that it's possible to beat a woman or your wife from an Islamic perspective, I would say this is contradicting completely the three dimension that I'm mentioning here. The chronology, the global message, and the objectives. No domestic violence in Islam. It's not only that we can play with one of the verse or try to make it uh, different. You understand? So, 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 so sometimes you have to deal with this. 
So I would say that on this, we can go for, for an understanding which is the comprehensiveness and the objectives, its importance. So I, I would say that uh, in many of the discussion that we have, even in the, the, the headscarf, no wonder for me, no wonder for me that one of the main things that the colonizers came with in the country that they were colonizing in the south and even here with colonizing minds sometimes has to do with some of the very important things that has to do with uh, our understanding of uh, the uh, men and women and for example the headscarf was always there look at all the colonization history and you will see it as something which is central it's central and the problem became central for the muslim as a reaction to this but still why was it a central issue for the colonizers it's an important discussion here.